I didn't even say I was ready. Jeez, ain't we? Ain't we popping? Let's see. I need that light over here. It was it was kind of better in the middle. Hey, I don't own the rights to the music. Wait, can I get my thing? Let's go. I'm gonna have to move this over here, babe. I don't own the rights to this music. I wish I did though. I'll tell you that. Let's move this out the way. Oh, there you go. Still a little good. Oh, why is this backwards? Hey! Hey. Why he always be getting me lit for these conversations? You do it on purpose, don't you? Let's go. I don't own the rights to this music. Do not own the rights to this music. Uh oh, what she said? She said, go down south. Yeah, I know it. Hey, what's up? What's up? Listen, put it in his mouth. Tap, tap, tap in. I don't own the rights to this music. You put it loud like you want me to get up and twerk or something real quick. He like it too. He over here cheesing. Let, let me show y'all. Hold up. Look how handsome he looks. Hey. I wish you was just cheesing. Don't act like you wasn't just cheesing. <laughs> Here's the background so y'all can see. We is real popping. We out here. Let's go. Let's get it. Listen, let's tap in. Let me get my peoples on. I'm getting I'm getting a few ladies on tonight. It's gonna be so so good. I'm getting some ladies on tonight. What we doing? What we doing? Ready? Tap, tap, tap in. I'm not even live over here, babe. Tap, tap, tap in. Tap, tap, tap in. Look, I ain't even live and I'm turned up. Hey, hey, hey. Which one is my Instagram, babe? This one? Try to get some people on. I don't own the rights to this. I don't own the rights to this. I didn't own the rights. So listen, let's jump into it. I know tonight is going to be so good. It's going to be so, uh, what's the word? Exciting. It's going to be um, some, some straight facts. Some of y'all might get butt hurt, but that's what we do. Not on purpose, though. We just keep it real. That's what I do. How about them apples? So we just keep it real. Y'all know me. This is the Jennifer Barker coming through from the Georgia State. And tonight, I'm trying. Huh? Where are y'all chiming in from? Where are y'all chiming in from? Put it in the chat. Put it in the comments. Where are you guys chiming in from? And then, of course, um, any, you know, thoughts, comments, concerns, definitely come through, come through. Um, working on some people getting on tonight. I'm working on a few ladies hopping on. Let's see what the responses are. But listen, let's jump right to it. Um, tonight is, you see the title. This came to me yesterday. Oh, I need the book, babe. I need the book. This came to me yesterday while Brandon and I were doing, um, so as some of you know, and if you're not, hop on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are doing Intended for Pleasure. Um, go to our page, direct.me backslash Barker Worldwide. It talks about our plan. It talks about our program. It talks about all the juicy stuff that we've been going on, the YouTube, everything. So we're reading this book, and yesterday's subject actually... Then we don't have a thing on it. Yesterday was uh, finding God's intention. I mean, finding God's design. Okay, that was chapter two. And when it got to a certain part, it talked about the 11. It was number 10. What's number 10? Oh, you're the one that I want to talk about. Right here, right? So it talks about, right here. Yeah. It talks about um, finding God's design, and it gave us 11. Was it 11, babe? It gave us 11 um, principles. principles to have a happy marriage, right? Was it a happy? Uh -huh. Where are you going back so far? I was just trying to read what it said. Right here, 11 biblical principles that help to ensure a happy marriage, right? 
Yeah, I look cute tonight. I just have to say that. I got hair nicely done. Oh, we got Miss Demita in the building. Miss <laughs> McGee. I might have to chime you in, lady, if you got a couple of minutes in a little bit, because we're talking about serving, submitting, or slave. So if you could hop on just for a quick three, four, five minutes, that would be amazing. Miss McGee, tell hubby I said what up. Praying for y'all. Love y'all. Miss y'all. Uh, but listen, let me know. I would love to get you on. Uh, what's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, I see you. She said, I saw the title. Let's go. So listen, guys. Um, So we're talking about tonight the submit, right? So when we read this chapter, Brandon and I read this chapter last night, the 11 principles to help to ensure a happy marriage. We're going with the book Intended for Pleasure. So when we saw this um, and we when we read number 10, it might have been nine. even nine. It might have been nine. No, it said number nine was the husband must 100%. No, 10 the husband is the head of his wife. So then it got into, this is for, you know, this is, it's a Christian book, guys. It is for Christian marriages. But even if you're not in certain religions, definitely just chime in, listen in. And it got so deep into how the wife submits to the husband, right? And the husband is the head of the home. And it got into that. It got so good said the husband is a spiritual leader of the home and the head of his wife whether he functions in the capacity or not then it goes in the bride to be should realize before the wedding how important it is to marry a man she can gladly respond to and submit to as her spiritual leader and protective head so it gets deep and so when we were reading this last night i said oh my goodness i have to talk about submitting as a wife to my ladies it's ladies night i gotta talk about it and then i thought bam servant we are here as servant leaders we are here as servant wives right then i said some people in my this is this was all happening in my mind while we were going over this chapter because when i tell you ladies wives on here when god speaks to you at that time he's the holy spirit just comes in and while Brandon was reading this and I was reading this, it instantly came to me, the slave, the word slave. So I sat back and I said, man, I'm, I'm talking about this. I wrote it down, submit, serve, slave. That's all, I, that's all I wrote. And today and last night, I got in deeper. And the reason why I came, I guess the word slave came, it was because I want to really distinguish for us wives, there's a stigma out there. Let's talk about it. Y'all know I keep it real. And there's a big stigma saying that some people, I've heard it, some people say, oh, some some wives are like slaves. She's like my slave. She's supposed to cook clean and she does this and does this and does them. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not, that's not what we're supposed to be here for. So when I thought servant, submit, and slave, this is what God had led me to because I'm like, you know what, let me talk to my wives. Because at the end of the day, we all need to realize that as wives, we're not here to be slaves. And I'm going to say that loud and clear for my wife in the back or the husband in the background. That's some back, back there listening. Oh, Miss Barker on tonight? Yep, she is. We're not slaves. There's a difference between serving your husband and being a slave for the husband. And I don't, I'm not saying you... Like when I say for the husband, I don't, I'm not saying be the slave. I'm saying it's it get, they get confused. And you as a wife might think I'm supposed to be this whole slave for him. Or the husband might think, oh, she's mine. She's my slave. No, sir. No, ma'am. Serving and submitting and slave are all separate. Slave, we're not slaves. Slaves is back in the day. There's actually a modern day slavery. If y'all know what I'm talking about, we work and, you know, we slaves, you know. But when it comes to marriages, absolutely not. We're here, we as women, we should serve our husbands. If you are on this call right now or if you're watching a replay, if, you're, if you are agreeing or if you're okay with serving your husband, put it in the comments. How do you feel about serving your husband? How do you feel about the difference between serving and slaving? Because I have seen 
some husbands confuse serving him and slaving like being his slave like go go get my food pick up my shoes go do this go do that get the laundry get the food like like slave mentality exactly I got, you know, one of my amazing mentors on the line, like I said, Ms. Ms. Demita McGee here, and she's mentioning she serves her husband daily. Absolutely. If you can throw in some um, samples of, of slave, oh, not slave, I know we don't say, of serving, throw it in there. You know, I, I actually wrote it down. Um, serving. We serve our husband. Like, I know, I know Brandon. He enjoys when he comes home. I ask him, I don't slay, oh my God, Brandon. No, I ask him, hey babe, you wanna make your salad? Or I'll call, hey babe, I'm gonna set up, Um, you know, are you hungry, how you feeling? You know, cause now I know him this far where I don't just have a plate served and he comes home. Some, everyone's different, some husbands, they like that. But Brandon, sometimes he's like, no, I gotta go do this babe, maybe in a little bit or I do. So I've learned, so I've learned because I have, food has wasted. And I call or I ask when he comes home. That to him is a form of serving him. And I agree. I'm not being a slave and running to go in and, you know, get the food and oh my gosh. And I will say, because I did my research, you already know, serve, servants, where is it right here? Servants, if you guys look at, actually slave. If we look at the definition of slave, in the Bible it says, obey to master with, um, Obey to the master with fear. That's what the Bible says in um, one of the passages I looked up. Obey to master with fear. So wives, ladies. One, yes, we obey our husbands in, in, a, in a certain way. And I will discuss that in a few. Two, we're not fearful of our husbands. He's not our master. So that's why we're not slaves. Like we're not, this is not a slavery commitment. This is a covenant where we're one and we're serving one another. Like my husband will tell you all the time. I try to, he tries to out serve me all the time. He tries it and I try it too. Sometimes I'd be like, okay, I'll take all the serving. Sometimes I take it. But then there's days where like, like, like my friend said, we serve our husbands daily, daily. I, you know, there's, and, and of course everyone's husband is different. Um, it works. He works hard. Absolutely. And I know, and I know, I know Mr. McGee be working hard. I know it. He be driving like a hundred hours to get to work. I remember that call and he was on the road and he's on the road. And let me tell y'all why. when your husband are, is on the road or when he drives far home from, from work or to work, we have to acknowledge this and treat them as the Kings they are when they come home. Like I know some the husband comes home and uh, they just go about their business and it's like, no, serve your husband. Hey, babe, would you like, um, you know, something to eat? Would you like, you know, are you tired? Would you want me to rub your back? You want me to rub your feet? And I know some, I know this new generation think it's crazy to like rub someone's feet <laughs> or to rub, you know, like, like for example, my husband, he's, he just started his coaching business for sports. There's days that his legs are sore. You know what I mean? You know, cause he, you know, he ain't 25 no more. So there's days that his legs are sore. And what, what do I do, babe? I rub him. Where, where do you need me to rub? Where, where's it? Where's the kind of sore? Where's the muscle hurting? Where's this? And you know me, I love all hands. I'm, I'm a. What is the one of the five languages? Is touches. Mine is big. I love touching, right? So I'm like, I'm gonna rub you all the way down the whole. Like, take the pants off, babe. I'm gonna rub the whole thing, right? Um. She said, it's easier to serve my husband when he puts God first. It does a good job. Abs, you know what? I'm so grateful. That is the ultimate act of humility. It's so beautiful. It is. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm glad you mentioned that, Demita, because I actually have on here, I put, we submit to the man. He submits to God. When he's close to God, he respects, he is respected and it's good for us to submit. So absolutely, we're on the same page because ladies submitting and serving, and I, and you know, it's two things where I wanna, I wanna, I wanna serve my husband. I wanna serve him. I wanna, you know, do rub and and set up. I put on here some samples. I think it was or on the page. You know, serving also means to stop thinking about us. We stop thinking about ourselves. It's not. 
Like, I know some nights I'm tired. Like, Brandon knows. Like, matter of fact, I'll give you a perfect example. Last night, I was tired. After our call, I was like, okay, I'm drained. I want to go shower. I want to go to bed. But Brandon was still hungry. So I said, okay, well, cool. What do you want? Okay, great. I don't, I don't, wasn't thinking about me. Like, what do you want, babe? Okay, I want a salad. Okay, great. I, you know, I, listen, I had the prepackaged salads because they're so good and they're easy to handle. And we're busy. So, you know, we got to do what we got to do. So I, I, but I set it out though. I set it out. I got the rent. You know, you still can serve with little things as simple as, let me just get the sauce, babe. Let me get you your, your drink. What do you want? Like stuff like this. In, in other words, think of the old times when the kings got served. Not this, not from the slaves. We're not talking about that part because the slaves, they were a whole different. Look at the demeanor. Think about it in your head, ladies. Like think about the demeanor when the king was served by the slaves, right? If that was the case, if they would kneel. It was very a whole nother subject. But when the wife of these different goddesses would come, it was always standing, coming with the food, with the fruits. That's serving. So think of the king being served. So last night, got his salad, the ranch, blah, blah, blah. And I, he's, he said, you, you tired, babe? Go to, go to bed. I said, you know what? I know, you're, I know your feet are sore, your leg is sore. Something was sore. I said, I know you want to rub. Um, what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here with you while you eat your salad. I wasn't eating. I was just sitting. I said, I'm going to sit here with you, babe. And he could tell y'all about this I'm, on Friday. I said, I'm going to sit with you here and um, just talk with you while you eat. So I, cause I knew if I went to sleep, ladies, if I went to the bed, cause he was like, just go lay down and wait or something. I was like, dude, I told him, I said, babe, if I go to the bed, I would pass out. Like I, I would have been knocked out and then I wouldn't have rubbed his leg. And my whole goal for last night was he was, I don't even know what it was. I think his feet, cause something had the job or something. I don't know. And I wanted to do that. I don't even think we, I did. I think I did a little bit for like three seconds and then we laid down and passed out. Cause we were both tired. Serving your husband is an act of love. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it. It's tough. It is. Feel like it though. It does. So there's days that you don't want to. And I'm glad you're mentioning that, Demita, because there's days that, like last night, I was tired. If I had to really choose between babe eating and me being there with him to rub him or me going to be passed out because I was super drained, I would have definitely been like, I'm going to sleep. But like I just read... It's not thinking of us. Serving, y'all look up serving. It's not thinking about it's not thinking about me. Think about when we serve others. How many of y'all serve the public or like we we serve the homeless? When we're out there serving them, we're not thinking about I'm not thinking about oh I want to I want these these chips, like I want them. And I'll tell y'all right now. Sometimes we're going for hours and there's times that we would be like, man, I would tear up these chips that they get in or fruit or whatever they were getting. But we knew and I knew it's not about me. Jen, it's not about you. You could go to the grocery store and buy whatever you want. Meanwhile, these homeless people don't have a dollar to get and we're giving them food. I would be hungry. This was the beginning. When I learned, I would take our snacks. Like I was like taking snacks. Or at the end, they would mention, hey, there's some bananas or whatever if y'all want some. But it, when you serve others, you're not thinking about you. So for, so for some of y'all that go to church, if you volunteer and serve at the church, you're not at the church serving, like, you know, the people that welcome you? They're not at the door on their phone or thinking about themselves and, oh, do I do this? No, they're at the door Hey, good morning. Hey, great day. Have a good service. Have they're there to serve you. So as a wife, how are we not thinking of I am here to serve my husband? It says in the Bible, serve like Jesus. How does Jesus serve? He serves to love, have compassion, and walk in humility. And I'm telling y'all. These some of these things are saying that I'm saying are straight from the Bible. So if you don't agree, then that's up to you. Everyone is, you know, we can agree to disagree. But when it comes to the word, that's y'all know the word is the truth, right? So when it says we are here to serve like Jesus, wives, it is our duty. And I'm gonna say it one more time. And whoever has a problem, hey, that's what it is. Like my friend said. I have no problem serving my husband, 
because I know my husband serves God. I know my husband has a relationship with God. I know my husband goes to God first. And it's a big deal. One of the biggest deal about submitting and serving, especially submitting as a wife, you want you are submitting to the head of the house because he's submitting to God. And it, I, and I said this last night when we look at the 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 way of like a little triangle is God, man, wife. There's a reason why he's the head of the house and the way he submits to God shows that love than when we are open and we are submitting to the husband. Because at the end of the day, if we're submitting to the husband and the husband is submitting to God, we are ultimately submitting and serving God. Wives, this is huge tonight. Like tonight, I really wish in one day this subject of all these three, serve, submit, and slave, I will speak about this to hundreds and thousands and I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to claim it. I'm going to manifest it because it's a big deal that us wives understand marriages are falling apart because of submission. Submitting. What does submitting mean? Let me tell y'all. Submit. To give over or yield to the power or authority of another. Right? Wife respect the husband's love then leads to godly thriving marriage. Okay, we go to the book. It says, and the wives see that she referenced her husband. What does it mean to reference her husband? It means to give him respect. Men, it is difficult for your wife to respect you if you are not respectable. And we just discussed this about submission. When you submit. Now listen, and I'm going to be honest with y'all. Because you know, it's ladies night. I'm going to tell y'all what it is. When I first, um, before I got married, some of y'all know this story. Before I got married, I did not believe in submitting. I didn't like it. I didn't agree. I was like, what? You want me to submit to Brandon? You want me to do? And, you know, let me tell y'all, my background, I was raised Catholic. We did never discuss, I don't remember discussing submission, submitting, serving, none of that stuff. Like, it's just, we, I don't recall. Maybe we did. I don't recall. But it was just, you go to church, you get married. You do what he says, and that's it. Like, it literally, that's his, I don't know, Catholic, Hispanic culture is a whole different ballgame. So when I heard submit, when we went to premarital counseling, I looked at Brandon, I was like, boy, ain't nobody submitting to you? Like, for what I did, it was horrible. This was like the pre, like, gen in the word type of thing. Yeah, I always read, you know, well, I knew the Bible. I didn't really read it, right? <laughs> so um, it was a difficult week for me because it was an eight-week program. It was a difficult week for me to submit and to learn about this. But I was like, I'm going to marry Brandon. I love him. I want to do this. I want to learn what this really means. Because he was like, yeah, you are. You're going to submit. That's mine. You're mine. We're one. We're going to be one. Like, he was, like, not playing it because he was raised that, you know, differently. So when I learned, because I was under the impression submitting was like slavery. I'm going to say that again to you wives here. I was under the impression submitting was like being a slave to your husband. That's why when I was so amazed last night. So God works through the craziest way. And I was really amazed last night when we were reading this. And the first thing that came to mind was, oh my gosh, submit, serve, boom, slave. Why Why would I randomly think of slave, right? That's just like mad random. But then when I look back to my past and my history, it was like, hello, Jen, you thought submitting was form was a form of slavery to your husband i did i was like you're not gonna tell me what to do you're not gonna tell me when to do it how to do it where to do it what you what, what i have to do i thought submission was a whole crazy thing like i really did and thank god you know we went to that pre-marriage week because i was like i'm not i don't even care about it i don't even know what he's gonna say to pastor i don't even want to hear it i didn't brandon could tell y'all he could tell you the testimony i was like nope not happening, not submitting. I got to say yes to you all the time. Whatever. That's what I thought. That was that was the impression I had. So when we finally had the week of, of submission, I learned these things that I'm talking about. That it's a whole different ball game when the husband is the head, you're submitting, and he's submitting to God. Now, I will say 
ladies, if you're here and you're like, man, Jen, but what if you telling me I got to submit to my husband, but what if he's a jerk? What if he's not submitting himself to God? What if he doesn't honor and respect God and I still got to submit? Well, pay to burst your bubble, ladies, but you do. You wanted me to say no, right? Like, no, don't submit because he's an evil person. No, you still got to submit. And of course, but, you know, we pray and, and discuss certain things with the husband or whatever. And it's difficult, but you as a wife also should know if you're connected with God in the relationship of how far can a certain thing be done for submitting, right? Now, I will say if the, and, and this is no shade to nobody like directly, but like I just said, you're submitting to God, the husband, we submit to the husband, so we good. If he's not submitting to God, you're probably going to have a harder relationship. Everything is going to be out of whack. It's going to be unbalanced. And, and I hate to say this, but it is what it is. That's me. God, God gave me the word bold and I'm going to be bold. But does he really think you're submitting or is he really treating you like the slave? Think about it. And this is real talk. Because if we're saying he's submitting to God, you're submitting to him. Overall, y'all submitting as a union to God. And, you know, I like to be very, uh, uh, what's the word? Pictures. Uh, Illustrate. Illustrating, right? So if he's not submitting to God, because there's no, he's just not going to nobody. He doesn't even feel and he doesn't even be aware of, of, of a wife submitting. Now his mentality is the slavery thing. I was just telling y'all wives and I'm not saying, and I'm not on here saying, so whatever y'all feeling, I'm not on here saying, oh my gosh, my husband's not submitting to God. So he thinks I'm a slave and I'm just going to leave and run out the window because I'm not a slave. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that maybe that connection and that relationship is different. And maybe that's why it's harder for you to submit. And that's why it doesn't you know, the that's why, like my husband is saying, my director slash producer in the background saying, that's why we read the Bible daily with your, with your spouse, because now he's understanding more the word God, Jesus, what it means to submit, what it means to honor, what it means to love. Right. Like, like my friend said, she serves her husband daily she submits because he's also submitting and serving her and god so we just have to be very careful that we don't get because i tell y'all y'all know we get very transparent with these calls because we're just the barkers the bomb.com right there when that time was when i was like submitting now i'm not doing it blah blah, blah. then when me and brandon got married and we had a little rough patch i i told one of my girls i was like yo i still gotta submit to him and he's being such a jerk <laughs> y'all know i didn't use that word but he's being such a butt face and i still and my friend was like yup mm -hmm, girl you just gotta pray <laughs> and i was like oh my goodness i really like for real like i still gotta be like oh you know serving and this and my friend was like yes pray continue to read the bible can you continue to serve continue to submit, continue to do all these things. And eventually his heart will turn around and it will soften and it will go towards God more. And I was like, what? I thought this was a whole movie scenario. I was like, girl, you true. That I said, Brandon, he is not about to go and read and God, cause we, you know, we wasn't there. Um, but it happened. You guys see we're here. Like we have a marriage platform to encourage and empower other marriages. So I kept on submitting and serving. And granted, I wasn't the nicest submitter, if, if you know that's even a word. I wasn't the nicest, but I did. I wasn't the best server, but I was. Submission can feel amazing when your husband embraces his lead role. Absolutely, his lead role. For example, I feel safe, secure, loved and honored by my husband so proud oh thank you i see I, I love you know when couples mention these type of stories because it's so good to see that other marriages are also thriving with 
God first and building a foundation, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm pretty sure my friend been through some, some trials and tribulations cause no marriage is perfect, but you know, with God and submission and serving and understanding what this means, it's a whole different ball game, right? So I go a little bit further and it says, I hear, um, if the wife does not trust and respect her husband, it is devastating to him and finally to the marriage. The greatest desire of love is to find an answering love. So if you, if you ladies realize and the wives, right, you realize that this is all a circle. It's all coming back with serving and loving and submitting. It's all a circle and it just all goes back to God and how Jesus loves and serves, right? So it's a big deal that as a wife, we're understanding the difference of submitting, right? Submit. And it's not just like, okay. And another thing I want to say, this just came and just popped to my mind. Just because I'm saying wife submit don't mean y'all got to be some sex slaves. <laughs> okay. That just came to mind. Why did it come to mind? I don't know why it came to mind. Maybe somebody's on here thinking like that, Jen, I submit, but I feel like I'm a whole, you know, slave when it comes to the bedroom or something. Cause he's, he's, I don't know. He just a different person or something. I don't know. Right? That's not what it is. Submission and serving togetherness is with love to your spouse. Your spouse respects you back. Your spouse shows you that love, right? The other thing I wrote here is um, serve. I gave examples, rub, breakfast, dinner, lunch. Um, what does this say? I don't even know what it says. Honoring your spouse is to put you purposely to seek, to discover, and to meet his needs. Remember I mentioned you're purposely doing these things. You're serving on purpose. You're intentional. It's not like, oh, I'm going to serve him once a week. Like, no, the simplest things. Matter of fact, I asked Brenda last time when we were talking about when I was like half asleep and I was like trying to stay up. I asked him, I said, hey, man, um, well, I said, hey, babe, I know you like when I serve and because he likes when I try to cook and I try because, you know, I'm not. I'm working on my cooking. I haven't, you know, mastered it, but I'm getting there a little bit. So I said to him, like, dude, I know. I said, babe, I know you want me to make these salads and do all these things. I said, but so, you, you really like those salads that are already made. I said, you really like them. I said, so is it the same? Do you still feel that I serve you when you get these salads? Because essentially... I did the work like hear me out ladies some wives I did do the work right you know there's days you know I go to the store I go to the grocery I pick the one he likes I get it prepared like so I still do something it's not just like the salad just popped up in the fridge made you know no but I still have the intention purposely like he knows listen listen ladies Brandon knows that there's days that I literally just go to the grocery store just to get him his salad. Matter of fact, look, boom, better example. He knows, let's say, and this happened re recently, and I don't know if he's thought about this, but I have. I, you know, I call him, hey, babe, what's up? Da -da -da. He, man, you forgot your salad. He, yeah, you know, it's all right, cool. I'll just, you know, have a snack or something or whatever. All right, whatever. I, regardless of the matter, after I drop off our sons to school, I still go either to the groceries or I usually go to the grocery store or I just take one from home and I still go and drop him off the salad. So for me, I hope I haven't asked him for me, that's a huge serving my husband. Like, even though it's not like I physically, like I make the salad and no, but I could have been like, oh, well, you don't got no lunch. See you at home. Have a nice day. Wasting my, I'm not wasting my time or gas. That's thinking about me. Because realistically, there's days that when he does forget or when, um, yeah, when he forgets, after I drop the boys off, I want to come home. I got, I got work and business to handle too. But I'm okay with sacrificing me, not thinking of me, because I know my husband's hungry. Like, He's been working since early. He's working and protecting and providing for our home. How not nice would that be if I'm just like, oh, well, he's just going to be hungry. See him later. Now, if you're at that point, wise, 
seek like for real counseling talk to me i can refer you come to our program let's help you uplift that whole scenario because you should you should be to the point wise and if you're not we let's talk privately it should be to the point that all these things i'm saying you should be like yeah girl i'm serving him all the time every day i do what i need to do for my husband even if you're in a bad place and I'm not, and, and I want to make sure as my friends and wives, I want to make sure y'all understand. I'm not saying it just because me and Brandon are in a great, happy journey because it's, that's not the case. Like things are up and down all the time with, with people, you know, however, I do believe, and I'm a firm believer of yes, submitting and serving your husband. What about serve by keeping your tongue? What about sir? What does that mean? What do you mean by keeping your tongue? Um, someone asked a question, but I don't understand what they mean by keeping your tongue. Something you mean by like not saying. But like not saying nothing. Smart, like the smart. Mouth. Serving by not maybe not having a smart mouth. Or not smart. arguing. Okay, so I wouldn't say I wouldn't go into serving with that. I would say maybe more submitting, because I would include that in respecting and honoring your husband. To a certain, to an, a certain extent, right? If you know, if you're, let's say you and the husband get into an argument, ladies, and you know it's about to get heated and escalated, you have the right, like you feel like you know what, in your head, you're like, I gotta walk away, I gotta get out of here. I'm just not gonna say nothing because I know I'm gonna disrespect him if I do. That's an area, yeah. We just, we just, you know, kind of like you said, bite the tongue. You do mention, hey, you know, this is not the time. Now, there is a difference. What do you, what do you do? There is a difference with biting your tongue and not speaking up. I want, I want us wives to understand. There's a difference with biting your tongue. I'm writing that down. I like it. Biting your tongue versus, what did I say? Speaking up. Speaking up. What I mean by that, ladies, is if you don't want to get into an argument and you just keep it cool and you're like, you know what, babe, it's another time, let's not do it, blah, 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 and you still discuss it at a further time, one-on-one -on -one when y'all come, that's biting, that's, um, you know, just keep biting your tongue. Like, okay, we'll just talk later. If you're not speaking up because you're like, I just want to always avoid a problem, I just want to avoid an argument every time. I just want to not disagree all the time. And you're just not speaking up. Then that's a problem. Because now it's getting into deeper and deeper holes. And what I mean by that is it's getting deeper and deeper into a problem. Because eventually that one day that he's going to come at you funny. And you're just going to be like F buying my tongue. And you're going to snap. It's gonna be the worst one ever. It's gonna be the it's gonna be worse than all them times you biting your tongue. So it didn't make sense. It's like a waste of biting your tongue. So we have to be very careful, wise, when it comes to when we submit to our husbands, how we instead of worrying about biting the tongue or not this or not that, let's think how we can change that, right? So for example. Recently, the last couple years, what we've been learning is when we get into like a real heated thing. Um, I did it a couple times first, and Brandon has done it recently. Is we'll stop and we'll say, you know what, let's pray. You know what, let's pray. And that nine out of ten times brings both of y'all down. Like, oh, geez, he, Jesus in the building. <laughs> you know, because he will humble you real quick, real quick. You know, so you could do that. The other thing, Brandon tries it and it don't work great. He says, time out, babe, we need a time out. Just time out, time out. I gotta go, time out. I don't usually like it, but have, I'm, I'm learning, I'm, I'm getting better. Um, Absolutely, we, we, you know, keeping God first is big. It's big and I will tell y'all, I have no shame in talking about it and being about it with yes, keeping God first in your marriage in your relationship, in life, in your kids, because that's the way it is, you know, and if, and if others 
feel differently or have a different opinion, then, you know, we can agree to disagree again because that's just how I'm not going to live. You know what I mean? Um, that's just it, you know. And then uh, going further down, it says, in turn, oh, wait, no, the greatest desire of love is to find an answer in love. I read that, right? The greatest grief of love is not to be believed. But if a wife is able to look at her husband with eyes of reference, he becomes a king among men. I just discussed this. How does a king look? Ladies, wives, you think of a king in the mind. You simply sit back and see a chair. This is what we all do. I don't know why. This, is, this has been always the illustration of a king. On the chair, and this is what they do. With the crown, sitting with their, you know either slaves or the you know wife or whatever whatever getting the food the fruits the gifts all that stuff right so if we see our husbands like this he's going to become that king he's going to become like oh there's no reason with you know being strong there's no reason with um you know coming together there's no reason why we can't right then it says in turn he should give his wife the place of honor a place of special privilege and a preciousness. So remember what I said, ladies. I said it's like a certain it's like a thing. He if he doesn't submit and if he doesn't believe and if he doesn't but you're still doing it, eventually it's going to turn around and he's going to come back and say, "Man, I'm treating her with honor, giving her a special privilege and looking at her and treating her with preciousness." Now, I am going to say a disclosure, though. You already know. If none of this is going down, and he ain't doing, and he's not, and you're not, and it's just not, I, I listen, I tell y'all every time, and my husband says it too, ladies and wives, husbands, whatever, divorce is not what we want, and it's not what we hold. However, abuse is also not correct. And it's in the Bible. Like, if it's in the Bible, I roll with it. Like, oh, the Bible said we could do this? Okay, cool. We, we're good. It said we can't do that? Oh, we're not doing that. Because at the end of the day, y'all know there's a hell. Don't play with me. My husband be trying to tell me this, babe, there's, there's a hell. You better stop. <laughs> he be like, don't play. You playing. And I don't want to go there. You know what I mean? And if y'all believe or not, that's on y'all. But we do. So, if there's a scenario where... There's no submitting, there's no king, there's no queens, there's no respect, there's no love, there's nothing. It says in the book that you can walk away. Because you do deserve and should have a Jesus-like, you know, husband, marriage, bond, union, relationship, right? Um, The wife is elevated Oh, listen, they never gained the real queen they would like to be married to. So wait, many men have second-rate wives because they treat them in second-rate manner. Just said this. Mm, mm, mm. They never gained the real queen they would like to be married to. They just do not realize that the wife, in many ways, is a reflection of her husband. Just said this. They say, you know, you know how it is, wives. When we go on the street without our husbands, they be like, oh, you're representing your husband. Same way he represents us. You are on the street looking all raggedy. You're representing your husband in your marriage raggedy. You're in the street being a little thought. People are going to be like, she's married being like that? She's in the streets? Like, that's representing of who she, what she is, who she's with, all that. Cause it's true. You know this that when 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 people talk about the wife, oh, she's a businesswoman. You know, Brandon got him. You know, uh, uh the, the business wife, and you know, and so somebody said this the other day. You know, she's the one that handles this, and she hustles, and then and we're we're representing one. I'm representing him. He represents me. I tell him that when he goes out with his boys, I'd be like, mm, well, not like too good, but I'd be like, yeah, you can't be looking crazy because they're gonna be like, that's your wife, but you look or vice versa, right? Then it says, the wife is elevated to a queenly position by the wise and loving husband who puts its operation, the great principles of God planning marriage. It is much easier to respect the man who makes you the highest priority 
in his life and does everything to enhance your life and activities. Just said this, right? Submitting, serve, and slave. When you think about this, slavery, that's at the bottom of the barrel. So if you're being treated like the slave, and I'm telling you, I've seen it. Remember, I'm a therapist. Like, I see a lot. It's been over, you know, 10, 15 years I've been doing this. I see, and not just the husbands, wives could even treat husbands like slaves and not treat them as their king. That's a problem. God looks down and frowns at marriages that treat each other like crap and don't serve and uh, submit to one another. It said it. I read it some one of the passages. You know, it's very common. It's more common for the man to do it, but women can do it too. You know, don't get it twisted. Women can do it too. So if you're all the way at the bottom of the barrel being treated like a slave and you're not his highest priority, of course, everything is going to enhance. Everything is, why would it be better? If you are not the priority in your husband's life and your marriage, why will things get better? Why would he start submitting? Why would he start serving you? That's why Brandon and I talk about priorities. We talked about it a couple weeks ago, or he did, one of us did. And we discussed, it's your husband or wife, then you, so let's say, you know, it'll be Brandon, so it's God, Brandon, me, then the kids, then our parents, then our family, right? And if you're not on that level, like one, two, three, so then there's no respect. There's no priority, <laughs> you know, and, and you still got to serve. You know what I'm saying? Like you still got to serve. So now what? Now you're serving with an attitude. <sighs> got to get this man his food, throw the plate, got an attitude about it. Or you might not even do that. You might, food is on the table, food in the refrigerator. Y'all know how we do ladies? Come on. There's I be having attitudes too. Brandon knows it. He'd be like, geez, you got an attitude. But I don't, I'm not 100% on serving because maybe something happened. Maybe we disagree. Maybe we got an argument. But then, of course, I come back and like, oh, man, I shouldn't have did that. My bad. And then I'd serve 100 times more because I want to, like, make it up. <laughs> right? Um, then we're about to be finished. Um, the, whole sh the home should be the most attractive place in the world to the children, the mother, and the, is the greatest attraction. So it goes back to what I was saying. Every the wife, your priority, wives, we're priority. Wife, the priority is me and the marriage. And I say it proud. I don't really care. Like there's times we'll be like, oh, you be the wife. Yes. Yup, sure am. Mm-hmm. And what's the problem? It took years for me to get this title, boo. Like, what you talking about? You're not about to be coming over here not having some respect. What they say, you know, you what they said, put some respect on my name or put respect on it, something like that. It's true. Without a warm atmosphere, okay, let's go down a little bit more. It is never too late for two people to want to transform marriage. You heard that. Listen again. It is never too late for two people to want a transformed marriage. So two people submit. Two people serve. It's not I submit, you treat me like a slave or vice versa. Even though we still have to do it, it doesn't mean it's okay. Just because you treat it like a slave and you marry don't mean it's okay. You know, think about that. Um, these basic instructions from the Bible, if followed, will ensure a happy marriage. Applying heavenly principles to a marriage can produce a, a heaven on earth. This is my desire for every young couple and for every home. So that last sentence was just kind of the banger for us because we're here to really work on empowering, you know, why. Well, I'm here for the wives, right? Empowering the wives, enlightening growing, um, fulfilling. I deeply believe on a wife having a fulfilled, happy marriage. And what I mean by that is, you know, yes, I talk about serving, submitting, and then, you know, the slave, that's not even a situation, but it's serious because I don't agree with a wife having, um, like if you're struggling with, you know, submitting or if you're struggling with you know serving or something like that because if you're struggling that means there's challenges for your marriage and how you can get it get it really like on point 
because you're struggling, you're challenged. Like you, you know, if you're if you're fighting to, you know, wanna submit, if you're fighting to to you know wanna you know rub him down or set up your plate or or get things together, you know, it becomes a difficult marriage every day, and you shouldn't be living through that. One of the things I did want to mention is when I put slave, um, one of the definitions or a few of the words in the definition of slave, just a regular definition said the property of others and forced to obey paid for labor. So they're slave. You all know slaves are paid, right? Well, some most, they also, um, are known for getting beaten. And I, I, I wrote that specifically because the difference with the slave and like I said, the servant, you know, as, as a serve, when you're serving your husband, you're not forced to obey him. You're not forced to be serving. You're not even forced to submit. Honestly, if he's trying to force you to submit, that's where the slavery flips. Like now it was like, okay, now you're doing much, boo. Like now you just, now you don't toss the corner. Now you're treating me like, like not serving, but slaving. Right. And then paid for labor. We don't, we're not getting paid to, to, to put his plate on the table. And I know some, somebody will find and be like, well, he pays this and he pays that. No, you're not on the hour. You're not getting the $3 an hour like the slaves used to get because they was getting a quarter for like the week. You're not. And if he is saying, hey, babe, you know, you clean the kitchen. Here goes 50 bucks. That's in his mind. I'm paying her to do something for me. Slave. I'm going to just say it. Like, somebody got to tell y'all. I'm going to be that friend. I'm that friend. In the head that you're like, man, Jim talked about this. Though. Did he give me some money to go get my hair and nail stuff because I clean the kitchen? Mm. Ladies, is that really? And, and, and I know this is a really funny scenario because some people might people be like, oh, my God, girl, he gave me money on Friday. He, you know, I did this, I did that. He gave me some money. And it's like. You happy because he's giving you money? Because you was doing as a wife supposed to do? And you glad because he's... What is that? What are you? And like, like let's, let's be honest. Like, think about this. It shouldn't be like, oh, he gave me some money. And, no, it should just be like random. It should... It should like, y'all should have an account together anyways. <laughs> so it shouldn't be like he gave me, I gave him. Because now there's roommates. Now we're still slaving. You know what I mean? Like, no. And then, of course, the property of others. This one gets really sketchy. Just be careful, guys. Because I know the Bible says, you know, his body is yours. Your body is his. But when it gets into too deep of, I run that thing. I do, you do as I say. I tell you to bend. You got to bend. I tell you to do this. You got to do now we we getting into the boundaries of maybe slave mentality. Like I'm just saying, somebody got to keep it real, right? Um, but anyways, ladies, y'all have any comments, questions, or concerns? I was really excited about discussing submitting because it's it's a deep deep topic. Um, serving your husband, um, and then and then what slave is, and sometimes people confuse a uh, slave with um. With honestly, with submitting and serving, you know, not just submitting or not just serving. Sometimes we get confused. Sometimes even as a wife, we might get confused, or or even not even confused. We might sometimes, and even for me, I'm not gonna lie. Like as a mom and, and a wife and a daughter and this and that, and all these roles that we play. Sometimes you do start saying back like, "Damn, I feel I feel like I'm somebody's slave up in here. I'm picking up the shoes, the shirts, the dishes, the food, the what." And it might hit a little bit. You might feel a little bit like, ooh, I'm feeling kind of like I'm the maid or something. You know, and let's just step back and fall back. Like, okay, what am I doing wrong? Or what am I doing? What can I do differently so I don't feel like I'm some maid or slave in this home? How can the kids help? How can the husband help? What you're doing, are you serving your husband or are you doing things forcefully because you're, oh, I'm the wife. I got to pick up the clothes. No. It should be out of your heart. It should be out of love. It should be like, well, I'm serving him. You know, there's like, listen, I don't like doing laundry, but there's days that I'd be like, let me do, let me help him out do the laundry today. You know what I'm saying? And it's not because I was forced. It's not because I felt like a maid because I wanted to do it. 
All right. Now, when you're forced to like, oh, I have to clean, I have to, have to, have to, then of course now the mentality switches. Now the relationship with you and your spouse don't switch because now you're not feeling like like you're serving out of love. It's a big deal. Like really, ladies, wives, think about how y'all living. Think about your everyday routine. I'm going to let y'all with that. I'm going to let y'all go with that. No, think about how you're living. Think about your daily routine. Think about how you serve. He serves. You submit. He submits. And if you're at a place, because y'all know I always be serious about this. If you're at a place that is not at the right space or at the right levels that I'm saying tonight, seek counseling. If you don't know how or where or what or whatever to start, private message me i am a therapist right like i am a therapist i have connections i have you know sources and i have outlets and of course i'm not gonna immediately be like oh leave him girl run he thinks you're the slave no there's there's steps to to everything right but listen ladies listen wives share this message tonight out of all my messages and I know I've been, I always do some bomb things because I have always bomb ideas from the Lord Almighty. But tonight's uh, title and subject and conversation was bigger than, than me. It's bigger than us. It's just a big situation of marriages, right? Submitting, even, even, pause, even huge submission when it comes to the sex in our marriage wives. We're not the slaves in the bed. We are not, you know, some crazy animals. No. We submit with love. We, you know, serve with love, right? We give with love. We do what we want to, you know, we're like Jesus, right? So share this message. Tag your wives, friends, even the fiancés, singles. Tag ladies. Tag the husband. Out. Just share because it's, it's important. This needs to be out. It needs to be discussed. Definitely get this book intended for pleasure. It's an amazing, amazing book. We're only in chapter two. Chapter three, my husband and I are going to be out here tomorrow night. Is it tomorrow night? Yeah, tomorrow night. Choosing to love. Well, no, we're going to go back over. Oh, no. Tomorrow night, we're actually, well, we're doing what I just discussed. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night, me and my husband and I are going to go over 11 and 12. I mean, 10 and 11. And then Monday, we're doing choosing to love. Sex within the marriage of a man and woman who love each other can be like a precious stone shining and sparkling in the perfect setting. Look at that. Uh, uh, uh. Let's get it. So, again, guys, share, share, share. Go to our page. Go to our YouTube, The Barker Family. Share, like, subscribe. Spread the love. Talk to your peoples. Let them know. TheBarkers.com or TheBomb.com. www.direct.me backslash Barker Worldwide. We got, I don't have my shirt on today, but we have our shirts. We have just so many things happening. So many things flourishing. Appreciate y'all tonight. Have a blessed one. Stay safe. And ladies, go and outserve your husbands. Go and I'll serve him. Remember, five compliments a day can save you from a divorce. Just think about that. It was a research done about it. Five compliments a day can save you from a divorce. All right? And it takes time for a man's heart to heal. So if he needs healing, give it time. And if it's been 10 years, five years, we might need to seek some help, right? Um, but anyway, thank y'all for hopping on. I appreciate y'all. And I'm going to work on getting some women on here for real, for real, and like setting it up. I really got to do it and have some people on. But y'all have a blessed night. Thank y'all for chiming in. I don't own the rights to the song because I know Facebook will cut me off. Hey. What is that?